already of a Saturday, so I'm Ricky Gervais. That was Placebo, yeah, with special needs, which brings me to my next point. With me, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, there he Steve is. Steve Merchant. 104.9. That's it. We're back then. Well, for one last time. Well, it's certainly the end of the season. We're away for at least, you know, two months. We're doing the office special. Um, and possibly forever, depending on whether Carl decides he wants to carry on with this. It's because, I mean, we do this for fun. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do this for, you know, uh, um, money, obviously not. The kind of money you're earning, Rick, you do not need to do this. I don't need right. to do it. It's quite honestly beneath me, yeah. you know. We don't need to do it to further our career because it's embarrassing being Didn't on XFM. Didn't say, do not even bother cashing those XFM checks? It's I not worth your while. No, it's not. It's not it, yeah. It, yeah, the time it took to sign them, <laughs> exactly, it, 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 wasn't, yeah. it wasn't worth it. Um, so we do this basically to ridicule Carl. Uh, on, a, on a large sort of platform, I say large platform. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, XFM. Um, no other, no other radio station I mean, will have us. Roughly the same as standing up in McDonald's. I imagine Richard so. A, but of, but of yeah. a lunchtime though. Yeah, yeah. Um, or so when it's just the cleaning staff mopping <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in the, if Carl doesn't come back, he's breaking up the uh, three-way partnership. He's very much forever. Sting, isn't he? Um, yeah. In about what, 1986, 87. Uh, exactly. You know, he's going to go off and sort of make some quite poor, sort of jazz-inflected white man's soul yeah. and leaving us to you know, go about our business. Play pizza places. <laughs> exactly, yeah. 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 well I'm gonna go into sort of maybe writing Say, Dad, why can't I be in the CIA? <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about it, you're a drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, do you think anyone cares? I wouldn't have thought so. Because I think if someone was interested in having some good chat and some great laughs, they'd spend mm. more time with their friends. Yeah. Or listen to another radio station. Or listen station. to a decent radio Jumping show. Off, I think like that, yeah. they listen to XFM for some music to have on in the background that's loud enough yeah. so they can hear it while they're hoovering. Yeah. I don't think our fans hoover. Well, true. I think true. you've got to have- Or shoot up, whatever. I think you've got to have a house <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. to hoover. I'll tell you what they do want though, some great music. They do indeed. They'll be saying, since you've been gone. See that? Oh, that's the sort of link I can do if we, if we stay together. If you together. could cut out all the other drivel you speak, you'd be great on magic. I uh, know, yeah. Um, you've got a... Come on. You've got a, you, I know, you've got a rainbow something, haven't rainbow. you? Rainbow. You've got a rainbow something. <laughs> oh, it's rainbow. For the last show, that song had everything. It's got... <laughs> it's got two guitar solos. Yes. It's got a key change. It's got bad grammar since you've been gone by <laughs> yeah. Rainbow and that's for Camfield, the prince of rock. Yeah. He's gonna be the king when Vance, you know, just hands over his, his crown. Yeah. And you've still got that on XFM so, you know, don't worry about us going. Oh, you weren't? Oh, okay then. <laughs> no one cares. No one no cares. No one cares. This is our last show. Let's make it a good one. Let me give out the email address because I imagine there's gonna be a flood of emails. Saying, please, Carl, Keep the team together. Yes, it's uh, John O'Dot Coleman. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Tuck Coleman's not a team. He's just a big lad. Yeah. Right, come on. Um, what do you mean? Come on, I've got nothing. Ricky Dot Gervais. Oh, Ricky Dot Gervais. Yeah. Fm. Or Carl Dot Pilkington, because you can do it throughout the week. You can do it throughout the two months. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the what's the phone number for XFM? O two o seven. Is it seven double six six thousand? And then just ask people through the car and leave a message on his voicemail. Yeah. Um, so email him a lot. 0207 766 6000 I think and just ask for Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little Carl Pilkington. Little baldy mank twit. Uh, and say, please stay. Yeah. Please stay. Um, Carl, say something then. How are this you? This is your last show. Say hello. What are, you, right. what are your feelings, Carl, so far? I mean, this, are you tearful? Are you upset? Not at all. No? Can't, can't wait for three o'clock. Sure. <laughs> so it was interesting how Ricky was saying he only does it for the fun. I haven't even got that bit. Yeah. <laughs> I am paid peanuts to work Saturdays, yeah. which wrecks me weekend. <laughs> Pay yeah. peanuts, you get monkeys. I have, <laughs> I have no fun. Yeah. Right? You have a laugh. And what people You love is, this, you love this! You love me coming in and having a little chat beforehand and after. Yeah, but that's the funny thing, isn't it? Listeners just think, why Why does he get so moody about it, having Ricky annoying him yep. just on a Saturday? Yeah. It's not just of a Saturday. Why? It's in the week as well. <laughs> well and how do I annoy you? How do I annoy you? Daily. How annoyance. do I annoy you, Carl? See, you can't, if you be specific. Um, See? The first thing that springs to mind, when I'm trying to work with Steve before saying, come on, let's, you know, find some interesting stuff to talk about. I think you were playing the accordion in the air. Was it the accordion? I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter. They get the idea. Although it I was... can't play the accordion, so it wasn't very good, was it? Where did you find an accordion? I just, I just was one out there, right? And then yeah, I so the drum kit you started playing with. And then, yeah. then I had a loudspeaker, and I put the accordion, put the loudspeaker. Then it loud those loudspeakers. 
They're the, amazing. My question is this, Carl. Do you honestly think that's going to stop just because we're not on air anymore? <laughs> He's not going to see you on a Saturday, so he's just going to come in even more often. Yeah, I can just drop he in. He won't bother me as much, though. I think he will. And he'll have his fob taken off him, so he won't, he won't be able to just wander in. Of course I won't. So, what, they they're won't. not- do you think they're, they're, they're gonna- they're, of course they're gonna let Ricky Gervais walk in any time they want. Yeah, I might come in, I might do a few trailers, might hang out, you know, with Andrew, going, hey Andrew, how's it going? He'd go, yeah, we're oh, having a bit of trouble, what do you think? I'll say, lose that off the playlist, put that one on, sack them! Yeah. yeah? Let's have a little bit of feeder. Yeah. Forget about tomorrow. At least we're here today, Steve. <laughs> oh, the three of us for a, an hour and a half more. The last time ever, possibly. It's up to little baldy head manky. Well, Carl Pilking Todd. <laughs> a number of emails, Rick. Yeah. This is from Matthew Davis. I think he very much captures the mood of the email public. Uh, his, his email is just simply titled, Go! In the name of God, go! <laughs> it says, Why wait till three? Why not leave immediately and stop subjecting us to this abject misery? Well, Carl did once when he had to get a train. Uh, of course. Let's so, uh, that's never happened on radio before. But who knows? I mean, stay tuned. We might shoot off at, uh, at 20 to 2. Or we might get better. We might get better. We might get better because we've done a bit of planning because I got Carl round last night. Really? To do some planning of the show, didn't I? And so we've, we've yeah, got... I thought you were going to be there, Steve. No, I wasn't talking about it. Yeah, well, I, I called him up and said, why, what are we doing? He said, well, you can come round and, you know, have a chat. Maybe yeah. get some ideas and that for yeah. tomorrow. So I said, is Steve there? Yeah, Steve, Steve will be coming, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go round. It's close. Next, next to his flat. It couldn't, the pub couldn't be closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright? Yeah. Uh, unless there was sort of spirits and that in the lift. <laughs> they couldn't have got closer. <laughs> yeah. Alright? The turn up. You're not there. No. Yeah. He's lied. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, so... I mean, you wouldn't come out if it was just like you thought I was gonna muck around. I had to pretend it was work All to right. get you out. So, you yeah. weren't there, Steve. No. Anyway, so he says, oh, come in the flat, you know, um, got, got an interesting book that, that you'll like. Okay. So I think, well, that's kind of work, you know, sure. he's trying and that. Yeah. So I go in thinking we're going to get some, some good ideas and that from this book. Couldn't find the book. He looked for about 40 seconds, said, oh, I don't know where it is. Then, oh, come on, let's come in here, let's have a wrestle. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so I'm sat in the lounge. Right? Yeah. Sat there just chatting to his, his girlfriend and that, just chatting. He comes wandering out. In his underpants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was comfortable, yeah. I don't know if you were comfortable, because it was sort of pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Right between the crack. <laughs> right. <laughs> Looked like... Uh, okay, probably like a gay sumo wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and I did a little dance for you, didn't I? Because there was MTV on, and I was doing a little dance. Dancing to Elton John's new one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! And what did you say? What did you say when I was doing a little dance for you and my pants pulled up? Like, right? Do you remember what you said? No. You went, I, I poured him a drink, he was in my home, I'm entertaining him, he goes, are you sure you're not a bender? <laughs> <laughs> Is that any way to treat a host? I think it was the right time to ask. <laughs> Do some work, didn't we? Because you then you got confused and you said he said he's you know oh god it's like a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons in ancient Greece, right? It was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah. I mean that's about the the male being uh, um sort of a, a first class citizen, yeah. much better, wasn't it? An aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful Carl, man yeah. than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as a. Uh, uh, as higher class, so to have sexual relations with a man was there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon. And as I a said, different... "Well, it's, you know, ancient Rome." I said, um, "Even uh, Nero, he used to he sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men to just go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he, he was having a wash." Didn't do that. It, he did. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. And he's not a gay fella. No. Well, no. I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever you... So what, what did this fella do then? This one who's having his... Well, he was, he was pretty much top, top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And, uh, you know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If, uh, Caesar or... But why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go, oh... No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the door was opening. I was going to see what Nero's doing. It's not like when I pop in here to no, see you. No, yeah, normally what would happen is you'd say, come back to my place, I've got a book for you. <laughs> yeah! you <laughs> pop in, but you'd he'd come out it. in his pants, you'd, you'd Elton probably, John would be on. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know, and you'd have popped round there and you'd have gone, there right, Nero, there's, uh, there's the tablets of stone you wanted, and you'd go, Pilkington, why are you here? 
Pop under. I don't know why he's French. What, what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles, and you'd have done it. Because he was near her. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's, no, there's no way I would have done. Yeah. Well, you would have. What have I done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, you, what, you put around to Nero's place for pizza. <laughs> I've dropped right. a pizza Right, I'd, I'd say I've done my job. Right? Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he'd have said, get the little baldy chap to nibble at my testicles, and you'd have been the water. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it. No, well, well, you wouldn't have put me head under the water. Yeah, I wouldn't have done it. Can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling at his testicles, you'd have been going mad. You'd have been noshing him just for extra. You'd have had a. You'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going, either guy, I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental. They'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking. He'd have chopped, you'd have, you'd have gnawed his right. packet <laughs> off. You'd think you're eating Walker's crisps. <laughs> there'd be bubbles, there'd be blood. Oh, it'd be <laughs> horrible. On XFM 104.9, our last show, maybe. Me, Ricky, Steve, and little Carl. All right, Carl? But um, that, that book, that that wasn't a fake. Uh, it wasn't like just a ruse to get you back to show you me and dancing in my pants to Elton John. It, it's that. Uh, what was your girlfriend doing during that? Instantly, I think she was just getting on with sort of like packing up sort of boxes because yeah, we were moving. She's she's moving uh, sure. I, I don't think. Well, she's seen it all before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the book was. Uh, do you remember that book that I showed you? That um, it was um, a man's body and owner's manual, and it's just yes. like loads of stats. And there's one in there. Yeah, it's kind of like a Guinness Book of Records of of men. Of, yeah, yeah. There's one section there. That was. Uh, sorry, hang on. This... It's not a Guinness Book of Records of men. <laughs> that just sounds a little bit like you and I were sitting around your house <laughs> looking at a big book, picture of men. The big it. man book. <laughs> the big man. He book, is yeah. a big man, isn't he? Yeah. He should be on the front cover. Yeah, it was a book more about the kind of physical body and exactly, about yeah, biology and, and yeah. social and you know, sex and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And but uh, we didn't which look is, at the sex. Which, which is where was uh, uh, we got the uh, knob news for today from, right? This is this is true, right? Um, I read that the- Oh, You'll have someone's eye out! Knob news! Then you've got the jingle. Yes. Um, I read that the smallest ever functioning penis, right, was under three quarters of an inch when erect. Extraordinary. That is bad luck, isn't it? And yeah. it's a micro penis, so it's perfectly, perfectly scaled down. Just a little, just a little look at Carl's face. Well, come the fella have said look, right? I'm not happy about it, so I don't, don't print it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the sort of press people want, is it? <laughs> there wasn't a picture of him. It was anonymous. They didn't read the book and uh, at, at work the next day and go, look at this, Frank. What? Smallest ever penis, uh, half an inch. He didn't go, it's me. <laughs> he just went, yeah, loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's have a shower. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. He must have had to have a little jod. With a pair of tweezers. Yeah, presumably. Because you couldn't even get a fist. I mean, no. That is bad luck, isn't it? Was he a good-looking fella? What or? would you do, right? If um, uh, he invited you round and said, right, and he was like the king, right, and he went, oh, Carl, can you just go in there and just nibble at it, and you go under the water, and you're just about to nibble at it, and you go, you come up and you go, that's tiny. Would you be disappointed or relieved? Right. Well, that wouldn't happen. No, Carl. I'm saying if it did, would you be would you be disappointed? Would you go, oh, that I can't even get. I don't know where to start with that. Or would you go, oh, thank God, it's not a big one. You've got to remember that he's the emperor, so you've got to do what he says, or he'll have you killed. What would you do? Would you would you go? Oh, I love lovely set of tackle, or oh, it's not as big as I wanted, or would you th yes. secretly think I'm glad it's not oh, big because I didn't want to because I'm not that guy. I'm not. I'm not even gonna think about it because I wouldn't do it. I know I wouldn't do it even back then. <laughs> even back then, what do you mean? Even back then, what? When was when was Nero at, at it? What? what? <laughs> well, the Roman Empire was sort of like two thousand. Well, it stretched up for to years, about yeah, years, yeah, yeah. So, uh... It's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. You'd have to, you'd have to. I always remember, um... We're still doing Nob News? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just a... Is this Nob News extra? extra? Nob News Extra, excellent. Well, in, um... You know, I didn't do that well at school and that, right? But we had biology. Mm hmm And I didn't take, uh, didn't take much of it in, but there was one day when... When it was about, you know, Nob News and stuff. <laughs> it was. Um, and it was all about how, uh, blood, you know, is what makes... Engorges. Yeah. The erectile tissue. Sure. Yeah, it was all about that. And, uh, there's this girl in our class called Paula, right? We were sat there watching it, and she fainted. You just heard her go, <laughs> oh! <laughs> and she hit the floor, right, because we were all sat on top of the desk watching this. Right? I yeah. wasn't really, I wasn't that interested in that. No. Uh, I wasn't looking at it and that. 
But uh, <laughs> but Paula, right? She she <laughs> fell over. <laughs> and the funny thing was, right? What was um, it? A video? Yeah, a video of like this this <gasps> blood. Yeah. Doing doing the business to yeah, this yeah, yeah. this fella's member, sure. right? <laughs> and uh, she fell over, like, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Oh, what's up with her?" <laughs> and the teacher was trying to like wake her up and give her water and that. <laughs> And it was really weird, because then the nurse came in, and yet this video was still playing. <laughs> and the nurse came in, what happened? Well, do you seen this? Yeah. And you could hear, like, you know, then, then, then it was going on to, like, sex education on the video. It was all done from start to finish. What yeah. happens? Da -da -da -da. And by the end, and she was still out cold by the time it got to, like, and then they had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And that just, that just reminds so me of it. So it then. seems to me that that no, was a sex that, education that, class. She fainted when the penis got erect, and when she woke up, a baby was born. That's yeah. probably what she thinks happens. She's yeah. wandering around now. And she the, 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 the whole class just missed out of it because they yeah, saw so someone. She's ever with a bloke, and he gets an erection. She just goes, "Oh no!" Well, that's it. She was a bit of a class tart, really. That's yeah. why. Oh, was like, What's Carl, up with her? Carl, 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 Carl. No, she but. She was. That's that. Everyone was like, "What's up with her?" Now, she's not seen it before. But. Just reminded me then. Weird. But anyway, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I would be Anyway, yeah, well, let's then. leave Nero aside. Please. Yeah. The other thing in this, should we play a record and come back? Yeah. There's another yeah. interesting fact. There is some extraordinary facts in there. Yeah, well, there's more oh, facts. We're running over. It, but it won't be knob news. It won't be knob news. There'll be all different types of news. <laughs> all right. Don't look back into the sun. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington for possibly the last time mm. ever. I was coming in today, Steve, and I was walking just past, um, Shaftesbury Avenue, at the beginning of Shaftesbury Avenue, and, uh, there's sort of a little, little bit of a tramps corner going on there, mm -hmm. and there's a couple of tramps, proper, proper tramps, already had a few, and, uh, about sort of like 40 maybe, right, or that, that, they could be 30, they could have a hard life, they probably have, but he was going, yeah, and for, in, uh, in, uh, Johnny's coming down, but, uh, Les isn't gonna make it. And I was thinking they're just planning their social, yeah. a meeting there. I just think that they, that's nice, that they've got, you know, they have a, they don't just drink by themselves. Yeah. They have a, they go, what are we doing tonight? I thought we'd get drunk and sleep in the doorway. <laughs> we did that last night. But I just like the idea that yeah. they're, they're planning it. And yeah. they've got mates and they do stuff and they go, alright, how's it going? Well, you know how it's going. Yeah. I'm sitting next to you in a pile of pits. <laughs> you know <laughs> how it's doing. Do you think, I, I was also thinking, do you think they ever wake up, like, before they've had anything, at like nine o'clock and go, oh. <sighs> I was pissed last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. You were talking absolute rubbish. What was I doing? You were just going, I have You were just shouting uh, at cars walking in the street. You were joking. Was I, was, it, was I really embarrassing? Yeah. Well, you were pretty drunk. I'll tell you this, yeah, I am but never going to do that again. Oh, but at least I didn't make a pass at Dirty Agnes. <laughs> oh, God, what did I do? You were just going, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> just love the idea they have no little, yeah. little conversations and that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I go, I imagine one of them going, oh, I'm not coming out tonight, I've got no money. <laughs> Nor have we yet. Yeah. I'm just gonna go and dance. Just go and dance outside McDonald's. Seriously, I, I only made 18p today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. You know what, uh, cause I always, you know, I've always had a, a soft spot for the homeless, but do you remember that time I was walking over to yours once and, um, see there's the homeless people, there's those ones that, they try to retain a certain dignity. Um, by, they won't just come up and ask you for money, They'll come up and maybe try and start a conversation oh. before introducing the fact. <laughs> the fact that what what you despise and annoys you is the try that the thing they're trying to hold on to is a little bit of pride. <laughs> I know. And you, what would you want them to do? Well, just, be, like... just be crushed in a skip, going, "I'm just give me some money. No, look I at me." I just think, come out and say it. You know, come out and say it. But don't try and fool me because sometimes I feel like I've been tricked. I get annoyed because I feel like I, I didn't see you coming. You came out of left field, you know, Sorry, I didn't know you were a tramp. I imagine the fact that they're bare-chested, apart from a blanket with their hand out, covered in sores, and no teeth is a clue that not they're this probably- one, Rick. Not really. This was one of those ones, you sometimes see them, the ones, they're slightly older, and they've got a full suit on. They wear a complete suit, like a pinstripe suit or something, with maybe trainers, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> yeah. And I sometimes think to myself, you know, at what point in that moment before they finally left the house for the last time, did they think, well, what, well I'm gonna be homeless. I want to look good if I'm going to be. But it happens, I'm sleeping rough. I but it does happen quickly. Suit. It sort of happen, It can yeah. happen in a matter of mm. days or weeks. Anyway, listen. I don't. I'm not begrudging the fact that he asked for money. That's fine. I just felt a little bit annoyed because I thought he was an ordinary person. Right. And he came up to me and he said nice to distinction. me, "Go on." And he said to me, um, "Excuse me, mate. Have you got the time?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Whatever. You know, ten past three. And he went, "Have you got any money?" And I knew that. I was annoyed. And and it annoyed me because I thought. 
I should have known straight away. I mean, a homeless person, you know, I sensed it, sensed it straight away. Yeah. Excuse me if you got the time. I wanted to say to him, where have you got to be? Well, yeah. What appointments have you got? Well, no. Maybe he, d he d goes to work, he starts begging at three o'clock. Mm. Yeah, he, he asked all that day, he goes, what time? They go, quarter to four, whatever. You know what I mean? Then he goes, oh, give us some money. It's three o'clock. <laughs> right. He, but maybe there's the mornings off. It, yeah. might have been his, it might have been his day off. He was doing half day or, you know, shift work. Yeah. He might, you know what I mean? You never know what shift they're on. But I just on. think, when you see those people from shelter or from famine relief in the street, they've got to wear those kind of, those little things over their clothes that yeah. say where they're from. Or yeah. at least some kind of name tag. Yeah. So you know when you're stopped by them, you know what to expect. They've got a clipboard. I know. These homeless people who come out of there, they look like regular people. They come lurching out like zombies. You go, oh, you think that's that's, a, that's an attractive woman? She's just come over. Oh no, look, she's got a dog on a piece of string. I know, yeah. I just think they've got to come out with that's it. They should just come stuff. out of it. Just be yeah. honest. Be, be you know, be proud. Those people with their things sometimes annoy me. Is where they stand right in the middle of the pavement. I have to zigzag. I have to mm. cross the road four times to get through them. Mm. It's like it's like playing Getaway yeah. on video, avoiding all these up and down Oxford Street. You yeah. have to really, and they, they come out of, um, the worst when they recognise me. That's why I've got about eight standing orders now where I've been caught. But and I I'm leave worried. the house and I'm, it's just like people are trying to take my money from me. <laughs> Between my house and the tube, there's just swarms of people trying to take my money from me. <laughs> at any cost. Carl's got his first little direct debit, haven't you? Five quid a week or something, quite a bit a month. Yeah, I've, I've joined some, uh, something to help Africa out. Mm -hmm. Um, I quizzed her for a bit. I mean, she came over and she was saying... She, he was talking to her for about 40 minutes. Yeah. Just making yeah, was, sure yeah. your money was going right to the right place. Yeah, I was saying, you know, uh, why have I got to give you my bank details? This is the thing. And I was saying to her, I'm sure you'd make more money, right, if you just had a little thing that you put money in. I said, I, I want to help you out, right, but it's the fact I've got to give you bank details. And she's saying, no, this is the way we guarantee we make money. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can help places out because we could be out all day and we could only earn, like, 50p, whereas, yeah. you know, we know that it's worth us standing around. Yeah. So I was like, well, fair enough. So, so what's, what's my money going to be doing then? And I think it's called uh, uh, care, care of the World or something. Yeah. And she's saying we're giving them uh, money to buy hammers, and we're not just going to give them money to blow in and stuff. They've got to, like, work and... and they don't it. give them money? Well, whatever. What do you think <laughs> of these people just, like... Uh, <laughs> and these these drought planes like it's a being... gift voucher for being you. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to buy a hammer. No, what's what's they, they go with the buckets and go, oh, and they throw it up and they go bundle. <laughs> yeah, she she was making out anyway, right? That she was nice enough. She was selling it to me. She said, you know, we give them the tools, and they feel good because they're building up their own place and everything. Mm. And uh, so fair enough, right? And now I've done that for two months. So they've had a tenner off me already. <laughs> I'm checking it, making sure they're not ripping me off and that. Yeah. If I ever go to Africa and I need a hammer, <laughs> and there isn't one, yeah, I'll be livid. You'll be livid. Because, mm. you know, it is a lot of money. Sure, mm. sure. Every, every month, fiver. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about people hassling you and that in the street. I actually moved flat. The last flat I lived in, I moved from there because of the, the hassle. That really? was Yeah, it was a high street, and you couldn't, like you were saying, you'd nip out for a loaf, and spend about 40 quid. Yeah. <laughs> just, just on people saying, give us the money for this. <laughs> Samaritans, <laughs> tramps, heart attacks, old yeah. people, or whatever. It's yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. So it, it ended up pushing me off that street. It was no, like, I, I can't handle this. It's, <laughs> get, it's getting crazy out there. They measure those little stalls. Yeah. Hey, but listen. Let's make the world a better place with a little bit of music. Oh, thanks A bit of Bauhaus. Yeah. Of David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais would be Steve Merchant Carl Pilkerton, possibly for the last time. And, as a special treat, <laughs> a return, sort of like a summer special, an end of term, well, a gift to the fans, Carl is bringing back Rockbusters. Oh. Do no. Know, do you want to explain it? Uh, Rockbusters is basically Blockbusters, completely ripped off, done with music, um, that may or may not be a cryptic clue and may or may not be the actual band name, and may or may not be the actual letters he said they were in the first place. Do you want to sort of describe one, though, in case someone's a new listener? And, like, well, Exploding Pet was Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Okay. But basically, so. for those of you who are new to the show, this is the final show, uh, Carl reads out what he considers to be a cryptic clue. It's yeah. not a cryptic clue, it's just some words. Just a yeah. string of words. Yeah. And from that, you are supposed to deduct the name 
of an artist or a group or a band. Um, we've we've had things like the Jamaican fella swinging a fish round. That was de trout spinners. De trout spinners. So that's the sort of that's the level of intellect you are getting from Carl Pilkington. What was the Just one? Just do the competition. What? I was thinking, you f was it that she, she fell down Wet in Texas? Wetney Houston. She fell down into a puddle in Texas. Oh, yeah. On a knee. Wetney Houston. Yeah, so it you works, said it twice, it it's not cryptic, it so like just that. do it. Come on. Right, so there's three of them and you email in your answers. We've got some good prizes today and that. Right. Well, um, let me tell you the prizes. Let me tell you the prizes. They yeah. aren't bad. They're not bad. it, because this, you know, yeah, yeah, the, the, the yeah, competition's yeah. bad enough, let alone just listening. What, what's he got? three DVDs and about six CDs. He's got the young ones and all that, lots of TV things. There's some great CDs. Yeah, go on. Right, so the first one, uh, cryptic clue, um, this vegetable mm. started life down under, right? Mm. This vegetable started life down under, the initials K-O, right? K-O, this vegetable started life down under. Second one, um, the things that, uh, you normally find on the beach, right, have been found floating around the moon. <laughs> Right? Yeah. That's, uh, I think it's T.S. Uh, <laughs> you think it's T.S.? Yeah. You set the questions, but you're not sure. Um, so, the things you normally find on the beach have been found floating around the moon, right? And the last one, uh, well, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. <laughs> right? He thinks they're great! Well, he thinks he's brilliant! Well, you know, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Is it locked in? He did all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The initials what? there, FC. 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 Mm. Right? So you email in the answers, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Win that hey, stuff. Hey, let's slam dunk in some sounds. Well, slam dunk some ads first. Okay. <laughs> Called Wear the Hood at on XFM 104.9. It bloody better be. <laughs> I know you're from a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed it. You love a bit of hip hop, don't you? XFM 104.9. Yeah, keep it real. Hippy hop. <laughs> oh, it's so, yeah. yeah, sweet man, sweet. Halfway it's that kind through. of stuff, it's that kind of uh, lingo and that kind of patois that they won't be hearing next week. No, I know. No, no. Off making some bling bling. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so that's the sort <laughs> of. Five, yeah, yeah. Sweet. It's uh, weird all that, uh, all that talk and that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Brilliant. what that means, Carl. Excellent. What do you mean? No, just all that bling bling and all that, because I, I didn't understand it, right? So I did a bit of, uh, did a bit of research. Brilliant, that's what you should do if you don't understand something. Look yeah, it up. I mean, always scoop it I, I always do that, I always yeah. do that though, you know I do that. No, I'm yeah. giving you props for even doing it, Yeah, so. massive respect and big right. you up. Yeah, go on. But, um, it's all slang. Right? Oh, yeah. Is it really? Is it really? It's so it's not in the, uh, really? That's odd. No, I don't remember it being in Romeo and Juliet, but then... So yeah. you didn't, you didn't speak like that when you went to Oxbridge? What? Never mind. But no, I, uh... Did yeah. a bit of research into it, right? Go and on. uh one of the things that they use yeah. is uh Oh, I was out last night, did a one eight seven. Yeah. That's the uh, murder. Yeah. But why are you slang, right? Because apparently one eight seven is police slang. Yeah. Well if you well, it's gonna... not slang, it's a it's a code. Well don't don't use what the police know you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think they do it with police around. Do they not? Probably not. Carry on then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like, always remember the uh, Cockney rhyming slang supposedly yeah. originated because, you know, East End villains or whatever would make up their own slang so that if they're overheard yeah. in conversation, then they won't know what they're talking about. But just look, you know, just look it up in some kind of Cockney rhyming slang. Book. Yeah, I like that idea of going, OK, where is he? Where's fingers? Wow, copper. I'm going to tell you this. He's up the apples and pears. <laughs> exactly. well, I don't know what that means. Well, leave, that the, leave, the, leave the house then. Yeah. If you don't know that he's hiding up the apples and pears, you might as well shoot <laughs> off. Exactly. Well, I can't possibly figure that out, so I'll just have to shoot off. Yeah, where was he last seen? He was last seen with his trouble and strife. I don't know what that means. Okay. Well, you might as well shoot off then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a perfect code. Of course, though, uh, talking about Shakespeare, Shakespeare invented 1,200 words, and slang gets in, so there are more and more words, and slang soon becomes, you know, the norm. There's no, there's no not real words and real words, you know, do you know what I mean? They're, they're just as valid if they're common parlance, so they they all become part of the, or they fade away and they're, they're not used because they're a fad. Yeah, like was up. Yeah. Uh, mm. That, that, that's probably in the dictionary. That is, that, so. yeah, or, or soon to be. I was reading, uh, was it a couple of years ago, um, uh, you're gonna like this not a lot. Right. Got into the, yeah, sort of popular things got in there. Imagine that. Yeah. 
<laughs> You're gonna like this, not a lot. Uh, Zigga Zig R, I think, got in or something. Oh no, girl power got in. Right, girl yeah, power as a as a as a, fra a common phrase. Yeah, I like really, yeah. Sorry, go on. Go on. No, 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 no. You have to give me. No, it's just it's just that with the slang thing. Did I tell you I was trying to read that that book about uh, the governor? Oh yes. And that that was full of that, and it had a page on the front that you had to keep going to when uh, you know what I mean. When when he used a bit of slang, you had to sort of go right. I don't know what he means. Glossary. Right. Just uh, nip back, have a look. I but thought you meant, when you said oh, there's a page at the front, I thought you meant the cover with his face on. I can't remember who I'm reading <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is. Is this the book that you nearly finished reading, but you realised all the pages were in the wrong order? Yeah. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> he bought a cheap book, right, a second, uh, a second shot, started reading, loving it, then he started reading about this bloke, and he went from jail to school, and then he looked <laughs> at the page numbers and they were all out of order. How annoying is that? <laughs> I mean, you never read books, do you? I never, never read one, right? And Suzanne, it was a week and we were going to Hastings because you two had done me head in, yeah. right? She said, I'm going to take you away so you relax and what have you. So, ended up not relaxing because it was like putting a jigsaw together. <laughs> yeah. I'd started reading it on the train, thinking, loving this. It's a really interesting story about this fella who, you know, didn't have a great life as a kid, starts getting into a bit of crime, what have you. Turns out to be the governor. Mm. But it wasn't as easy as that because, like you say, it was started off at school, then he was in prison. And he's like, Oh God, he started young, <laughs> and then next thing is like married. And he's like, hang on, he's like twelve, and then he's, he's, quite, he's had a heart attack, <laughs> and then like, but I just thought it was part of the thing because I read chapter one, and then it did say chapter twelve, but I thought, right, it's like that sort of done in that stylish way that everyone's oh, doing. What? <laughs> what kind of a biography? Uh, Love that it went there. Messing with the I medium. Was, I was born in the East End. Take one onion. <laughs> Add some, uh, it's, 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 like, it's the idea that an East End villain's gonna write his autobiography, but think, yeah, I'm just gonna play with the form a bit. I'm gonna get quite postmodern with this. <laughs> no, but, you know he's I mean? barely able to write, probably. Yeah, oh, you, you can say that about him, Steve, I wouldn't. I think he's an educated man. Go on, next, Carl. But, uh, yeah, just because it was like two for a tenner, that shouldn't be like. Oh well, you you know you got a, you got a good offer. So no, that's rare. That, it, it, I'm yeah. sure the bloke selling it did not know that the page was out of order. Let's face it, Carl, you read it and didn't realise. Yeah. So you can't I really love blame him. You got almost half the way through <laughs> before you realised. I oh, know. No. Yeah. But anyway, you know. Still, so, that teacher, and that's put you off books for life, hasn't it? Well, I don't I don't like getting into books now. I just read snippets of information. Play record. Play record. No, I'm just going to tell you about a bit of. Information that I was reading. Okay. And I can't. Well, we play. No, no, I've got time for a bit of drivel before we play next tune. Well, I'd rather hear a tune and come back for drivel because I think people are tuning in for drivel. So let's tease them. Okay. Let's have a record. Then some absolute shite from Carl <laughs> Pilkington. Excellent. And further, I love that one on XFM 104.9. Richard Ray's Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl. What did you learn? Right. Uh, like I say, I don't like reading books. There's too much. To words. Take in too and much words. I'm busy in that. Yeah. Um, I don't like reading books actually. But yeah. go on. So, but I uh, have done. <laughs> so, go on. Right. So, I was looking in this magazine, right? And it was more about, do you know, I'm, I'm not that impressed with Einstein and Newton and that lot. No, why should you be? What have they ever done? Go on. No, but, you know, you know the fact, you see, the, the Columbus thing, he's another one, isn't he, who got a bit of praise for <laughs> finding America. Yeah. And it's like, it would someone else would have come across that at some point. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and yet, news... This week, they've found two new types of frog, right? <laughs> no one's making a fuss. And look how small they are compared to what he bumped into. And that's what I'm saying. People make a big deal out of all these people who are finding stuff, right? Yeah. So, the next person... I, I, I mean, it's, uh, my head's buzzing, but I can't be bothered. I actually can't be bothered. Don't think this reaction's a good reaction. I don't know where to start with this drivel, but carry on. Right. So, anyway, the next fella who... The I'm next like, fella. I d I, see, I don't know. You talk in riddles. The next fella I'm going to talk about, Go Einstein. On then. Yeah. Right? Everyone raves about him all the time. Yeah. Right? So I'm trying to get into my head. Yeah. Like, why is, why is amazing and that. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, did a bit of reading up on him in this science magazine. Yeah. Right? Now, I read it. It's only, only a, you know, I don't know, 200 words, whatever, trying to get across what he worked out. But I read it last night. Is it relativity like, you're talking about? Uh, yeah. Well, to say, yeah, like, I just made that word up. Yeah. It, it, you heard that's, it? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was as big as yeah, Okay, so the 200 words, as far as you recall. So anyway, so I read it and I was like, I don't, I don't know what, what, what is going on about here, right? So <laughs> Suzanne was with me. I said, can you read this? She said, I'm watching Sex and the City. Yes. Right? I said, right, but can you read it and explain to me 
what I don't understand here. This it's, is what I'm, I don't understand. It's, right. yeah. it's great. It's like, she's thinking, I, d I haven't got kids. Yeah. And yet he still wants me to help with his homework and yeah. I'm watching telly. Yeah. I've been at work all so day. she said, look, go in the bedroom, read it out loud to yourself. Maybe it make more sense if you read it out loud. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I said, right, I'll go and do that then. And it was good because it's cool in there anyway, right? So <laughs> I went in there. <laughs> so read it out, uh, twice. Went back and I said, I don't get it still. <laughs> So she said, right, wait ten minutes, and I saw it out. So I was sat there looking at it, trying to work it out before she had to look at it. I was like, no, I forget this. Now, what he was saying is, yeah. if you send a man to the moon, yeah. right, Yeah. he was saying uh, to the fella in in the rocket, yeah. it would seem like 20 years to him. Yeah, not the moon, but yeah. No, it was, that's what it said, it said the moon. Well, it wouldn't, because it's only about... Uh, no, but listen, listen. So, it took 20, 20 years to the fella, yet people who were on the Earth, it would seem like 2,000. Yeah, because cause time is relative, not... not. I don't... What What do you mean? Right. Well, the, well, listen, the fact is that it's tending towards the speed of light where it really makes a difference. They've even done it with atomic um, uh, clocks, where they've... Uh, Sent one up, uh, even in Concord, and it's like point not one of a second difference. What? What is the watch? Yes, yeah, because uh, uh, greater speeds. But why does speed affect how a watch works? Right, I don't well, think this is a conversation. Because, look, speed is speed. Sorry, see Scott, what I mean, just what I mean, Steve. Right. See what I've done. I don't think this is a conversation to be had on a Saturday afternoon on a no, radio show. But I'm just saying, though. It's not. It's not me, is it? It's, it I is mean, you. you. You went quiet, Steve. No, because you're having problems. Because there. I'm not going to be able to explain it to you. I will explain in it to you in a light, frothy way. It's, it's, it's speed equals to, basically velocity equals distance over time. When velocity uh, doesn't change, and nor does distance, no, time has to. That's his theory. Mm. Yeah. Well, we just got. What's your point then, again? Carl? What's your I'm, point? I'm, I'm just. I'm just saying. Uh, because you don't understand you know, it, it's, it's like, worthless. I was trying to explain to Newton. Uh, that basically formulated, the, you know, the, the laws of the universe, uh, the three laws of the universe. Uh, uh, even playing snooker, I'm trying to drop some in. I was going, well, equal and opposite reaction and all these sort of stuff, right? And, um, and he was going, what did he do apart from the apple on his head with the gravity? And I went, well, what do you mean? And he went, well, what, why was it a problem? If we were been floating mm -hmm. round, yeah. I'd have called him in. But since we're not, we don't need him. Yeah. That's what he said. Play a record. Yeah. You're a buffoon. So there's these two new kinds of frogs, you say. You're joking. What, a monkey had a hat? On XFM 104.9. Last show. Possibly the last ever show. It's up to the K-Man. Little Pilky. Baldy Pilky. Little Wingy. Dimu Manku. As he's called his Latin name. Dimus Mankoid. All right, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're going to miss this, aren't you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Good show, though. Enjoying the last show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's all right. And, uh, you know, I hope it gets better because, uh, Telegraph are listening today. What the Telegraph? The paper? Yeah. Why do you, what do you, are they? Why do you say that? Just, uh, Jenny, the PR woman, said to me yesterday, she said, uh, just, you know, do some good topics and that so you don't have to worry there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what you, what, they phoned up to say, uh, hello, it's Telegraph here, we'll be listening tomorrow. I don't know, I don't know what, they, what they're doing. They're Are they doing a review of it or something? I don't know. Why would they do that? With, there's no reason to. I, I, I'm a bit, uh, why didn't you mention this earlier? Because well, I well, 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 So the Telegraph have said, uh, we'll be li why would they call up to say we'll be listening? It's because a free said, country. Because they said they'll be listening, but also, can you make sure you record it, because... If we can't listen to it because of the pirate stations that are on at the weekend, because it affects our right. signal and stuff. Whoever's listening must listen and know there's a problem with pirates. And they said, "Can you?" Well, they're probably just doing a feature about radio shows or something. Then they're going to tear oh, us to shreds. They're going to. I yeah. mean, listen. To the, sorry, seriously, the drivel we've talked today. I mean, uh, what are they going to make of it? That's, well, a, that's no, a broadsheet I, I, newspaper. I, I think I know what Monday's headline's going to be. I don't think it's going to be like you know they're going to forget about the power cuts. It's not going to be about you know the inquiry or terrorism or anything. It's going to be no more to knob news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's gonna, oh. they're gonna love that. I mean, I, you see, I, I have a little bit of self-respect. And if I'd known something, quality, a quality newspaper was gonna be listening, I wouldn't have turned out today. Because mm. I, I mean, I'm an award winner, you know, and I'm a respected television writer. And I've, you know, won awards, sort of classy. Don't worry though, and don't worry. And what have we talked about? Knobs. We've had the worst quiz on radio. Mm, yeah. We've had you trying to explain mm. relativity. You didn't even understand what that word meant. 
You, I don't think you recognise the word. You read There's that article. Words, so, you read that article four times, twice out loud. <laughs> where you could, where you could hear Sex in the City music, right? And yet you, that I, I, I that word might have been a clamp instance. You yeah. hadn't heard it before, so I don't know. Do you look between the lines? Do you actually look at the words? No, there's too many words, though. <laughs> 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 and the Telegraph are gonna love that. Which way there's up loads you... of words. The Telegraph have got loads of words. I Which... mean, it's covered with it, words. Which way up do you hold the magazine when you read it? <laughs> no, but there is too many words. I mean, yeah. pictures of people, are they upside down? There's, 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 I mean, yeah. There's too many words. There are too many words in the world. Do you know what this one means, right? Go this on. is one I learned the other day. Uh, I think it's, uh, anti -Dewean. No, what does that mean? Old. Sorry, how do you spell it? I don't know. <laughs> of course you don't. anti -Dewean. No, I've I've never heard of that word. It, it, it mean it means old. But the annoying thing is, it takes longer to say, um, and it's the fact that if you. But use where that do you, where do you, people, where do you hear that word and in what context and? Someone told me about it. I was talking to someone about long words and that because you mentioned something when we were out drinking. And I said to you, why did you say that then? What, what word does that mean? And then you had to explain it, and I said, well, you didn't have to say that. You could have just said blah, blah. But can I say, Steve, I wasn't sort of trying to cut him out or being pretentious. It must have been just a normal word in my vocabulary that he didn't know. Wait a minute, what, vocabulary pretentious? I, <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> you lost, you lost, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell I tell you what. Like you're scared by syllables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's just... I'll hmm. tell you what, though. Um, uh, I was gonna do a feature about this. It's funny you should say it. I was gonna do a feature. My next feature I'd written down is how good the Telegraph is, the newspaper. Yeah. It's bloody brilliant. I love it. Because oh. it's informative, um, it's impartial, it does, it's research good. I think it's a lovely layout. The, f the photography is brilliant. Oh. Um, I love- Do you know what? I like the bloody font. I love, I love the bloody font. Uh, do you mind something else? I mean, you what? say it's sort of, you know, I mean, if there's any bias at all, I mean, there isn't because it's apolitical, but I, mean, I bloody love the Tory party. I love, wow, and let's not, let's not go into great. it, but I mean, but I, I mean, love, I just like to tell you, I just like the journalism and the, the, the way they- the size of the paper? Do, 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 I like the way they're fair. They'd never, they'd never like, uh, you know, slag us off. No, no. But also, so, I think it's because they understand that, you know, we don't really care, and so we can't be blamed for anything they hear on the radio. No. It's not really our fault. It's and, more sort of And anything we said that was like, you know, a bit nasty or stupid was, was probably sort of like some clever sort of ironic postmodern. Yeah. Satire. Play record. Yeah. Brilliant Telegraph. It's, it's, it's very fairly priced, don't you think? I think it's too cheap. <laughs> the cult there. She sells sanctuary. Um, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Now, if the Telegraph are, um, listening, and they're, they're you know, they're, whoever it is, they're writing their article, and they're, they're coming up with sort of words like cheap, smutty, um, low brow, low brow. Mm. yeah. Le uh, in in our defence, could I just say that we're pandering to our listenership? Yes. You know, I mean, th this this station. Draw I mean, w without exception, the people who work here, the executives, the DJs, are alcoholics, mm -hmm. drug users, yep. sex offenders. Check the register. You know, They're and we're there. trying to fit in with that for two hours a week. So we really have to sort of really bring it down. Seriously, dumbing down. Um, but if you want, we, we should do our- stuff. We well, we do our normals, like we talk about usually. Tits. When we, well, no. yeah. Satire. Yeah. Satire is what you mean, satire. political satire. Social political. and political satire. Yeah. If you listen any other week, that's what you would have heard. Well, we and Steve are sort of like quite, you know, political animals and, and, uh, you know, oh, Proust. <laughs> oh. I love him. Oh, I wish he'd- I wish he'd resign as governor of, uh, yeah. France. Have you read Martin Amos's new novel? I love it. It's all- it's so- Brilliant. Lovely. It's very long. Um, so, uh- Oh, politics though. I mean, what do you make of politics, Rick? Um, I- I'm sorry, I was just planning on going to the English National Opera tonight to yeah. see- To see, brilliant um, Tartuffe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, politics is brilliant. It's my yes. favourite thing. Say I, something- I, say something political. satirical and comical about, say, John Prescott. Oh, he's got- st it, stop eating pies, Prescott. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't like to be him about now. <laughs> so, that's, that's the sort of What do you make of George W. Bush? He's a bit stupid, isn't he? Well, th that's the dangerous thing. He's the most powerful man in the world, and I just think- I, I hope he's sort of- he thinks about stuff he does first. <laughs> oh, please, please, please. So that's- So that's sort of wise as well as- as well as comic. I thought of something about Bush as well. Go on. But it's- it's about his name and a woman's fanny. Oh. So I was gonna bring those two together. I think it's fine, though. I don't think that's- I think that's still quite highbrow, because you've incorporated Bush. Uh, which mean- meaning the president. Means fanny not, as well. Um, so I think we're pleased in both. <laughs> we got both camps. Um, <laughs> yeah. Camp. That reminds me of something. I know. Yeah. So that's so if you listen in Telegraph. Um, Daily Telegraph. That is brilliant. Sort of thing you're brilliant. Of. That's sort you're of thing you're brilliant. You're brilliant. To Too many words for Carl. But what about some adverts? I'd love to. Buy the Telegraph. Stop. 
on XFM 104.9. Well, if the Telegraph are listening, they'll be, they'll be loving the music. Oh, that's great music. They'll be loving knob news. Uh, coming up, Telegraph, just to keep listening, because monkey news is coming up, mm -hmm. and should we do the results of Rockbusters, the, the worst quiz? The on, best quiz, the best right, quiz. Best quiz. Oh, was that? Yeah. On radio. Do that shortly, although, um, probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which we always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something. We should, I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said monkey news is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just the phrasing, I suppose. It's, it's the headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> now, um, he wasn't up there taking a picture of Big Ben. <laughs> no. He wasn't going, can I just sit up here? I'm just going to take a picture of that, that <laughs> seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually... He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today. On the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this Not a secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just spring into life. There was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had some. I, someone set fire to some magnesium that was on <laughs> no, the end of it. No, it no, won't happen only, again. But it's only you and I in here, and your shoe was. It yeah. Was sunny lit. Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. There's no, no reason. Just, stand. just do, where? What did the bike look like? Flash. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you taking pictures of my family? No, 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 no. And now I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, do you know that? What? How did you know on that? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any... I didn't know you. I don't know what you've got up there. Well... I don't know what it looks like, and I never, <laughs> there's no way I could. <laughs> of course, that, that would be... It would be the roughly that conversation in Japanese. I know, yeah. Do yeah. you know, um, you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> Is this gonna be your Auntie Nora? <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the... The last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road, and I could see, uh... He was the hairy, hairy... There was the hairy Chinese well, not kid. not hairy Chinese kid. He was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids are very yeah. rare, isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. In one of those shit little magazines that you buy. Uh, yeah, he was running around in his underpants. Did you, me. sorry, you just swore ironically. I mean, I imagine if there's any newspapers listening, you did that. Because he's sort of jokey and... Yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, on. Yeah. Let's not swear. And there was the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading a the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died and no well, one came around yeah, for I weeks, yeah. But, and now I've moved, right? Mm. And it was quiet for a bit. I always look at what view I'm getting, sure. right? Uh, looks across and it was just sort of empty, sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right? Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right? Um, and they've put all the furniture in, but yeah. I haven't put any curtains up, oh. right? So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window, yeah. right? Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on. Right. With no knickers on. You mean naked? No knickers. Well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, she was no probably looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne. Sorry, is this some sort of Peeping Tom confession while the Telegraph are listening? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, it's, it's not, that's the thing, though. Peepington. I, if if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, because she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no. And your hands moving as you were washing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some white-looking substance <laughs> roughly up. A stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if she looked across. I'm assuming this sink is lower but, than the window. But, but did, didn't she just, like... Just cover up or something. Or she looked back and go, oh, you're looking at, you're looking at my funny. Well, <laughs> the thing I did. What? I thought, oh, just sort of dropped me boxer shorts. Because I what? thought. Well, Suzanne said, what are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just, just, just so they can see me, cheeks of me. What are you off. talking about? No, they, because I thought, 
if she thinks I'm ro walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. This is... Or the plot of a film on Channel 4. I mean, this, this is like the doctor who got done, right, for exposing himself to a patient and set, and brought, and then, then painted that little thing um, that you look down their throat, pink. Yeah. And going and going, this is what they saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your no, boxer shorts. No, she wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So this she is wouldn't genius. Have, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So more. you then <laughs> made them. <laughs> you actually <laughs> <saw> <laughs> <in front of> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front ah! of the window uh, to show oh, off not, your, your, it wasn't your naked lower half. Su Susan said, what are you doing? And I, I said, bet she did! <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? So I, I sent you in here to clean up. What are you up? doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down, standing by the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. What do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? I'm exposing <laughs> myself while looking at some free <laughs> funny! Leave it, leave it, leave it. What's up with you, Suzanne? Leave it. Leave it then, leave it. Christ! Are we doing Rockbusters or what? Yeah. Oh, she sent you in there to read up on Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Anyway. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, can I just check? <laughs> a final question. What did the woman yeah. across the way, what yeah. happened, what, what was her reaction? I didn't look again, I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well, we're both happy. Let's, let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers around your ankle? Yeah. I just was walking about and Suzanne said, what are you doing? I said, I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window, yeah. because then it's Excellent. obvious. Then, yeah. her, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked, and he goes, oh, she's got a... Quick, Suzanne, get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with England. Get some more friends! <laughs> They've gone one more! Anyway. Brilliant. <laughs> right, right, player record, so, come back to Rockbusters. And monkey news, we haven't got enough time to do Rockbusters. Oh, God almighty! Of Transformer, a little bit of Lou Reed. Nearly finished, nearly finished. Twelve minutes until we are no more. But don't forget, Vez. monkey news still to come. Well, yeah, don't forget that. Monkey news still to come, but now the answers to... Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Right, do the clues. Alright, the, uh, first clue was, uh, this vegetable started its life down under. Uh, the initials were K.O. That was Collie Osborne. Alright. <laughs> Collie Osborne. <laughs> the second one No, was... no. No, d what, what, are we letting that go? Yep. We haven't got time, Rick. Well, it's just, it's, it's, it's just not the word. We haven't got time, Rick. Also, cauliflowers so don't start there, uh, don't start uh, down under. They're 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 on top. It's not like carrots. No, or... down under is in Osborne. Osborne, it was born, born in, in Os Osborne. Right. Collie. Right. I thought you meant started, but Co her name's not so, Collie. Right. The second one was uh, the things that you normally find on the beach. Right. They, they've been found floating around the moon. That's the space shells. Right, specials. This is rubbish. I mean, I, I, I tell you, I, no, this isn't even funny though. Specials. I mean, they're no good at all. Cryptic. It's not cryptic. It's wrong. Cryptic. It's not cryptic. cryptic. The last one was, uh, well, if uh, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Go on. That's FC fifty cent. Right. What? Fifty cent. It was fifty cent. I didn't receive any, so. So. <laughs> Collie Osborne. Collie. Her oh. name's not Collie. Her name is not Collie. Doesn't matter. Well, one, well It doesn't matter! Well done to Gina Ferry, who has emailed in. She's got all those answers right. Yeah, just, and, uh, just emailing your address and that. Mm. Yeah, email that. You're such Gina. an idiot, Carl. As are you, Gina. Right. <laughs> By South. That's great. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it. Rick, can I just say thanks to everyone who's emailed in over the weeks and months we've been on, because uh, obviously we're too lazy to even send them a response or a reply, um, but we do appreciate We do appreciate it, same with all the letters and stuff that we, you know, we can't... Yeah, people send stuff in all the time and they say they like the show or they don't, or they contribute little ideas and stuff, and we do read them and we do appreciate it, it's just that we, uh, when you've got someone like Carl Pilkington in the studio, you just need to pick his brain constantly and you've got re no real time for admin, but uh, thank you for sending in all the nice uh, letters and responses and stuff. Well, finally, um... We should let people know that next week, for the, uh, foreseeable future, uh, it's Adam and Joe. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant. And they're standing in for us this time next week. Well, you say standing in, but possibly replacing full-time, unless Carl Pilkington decides to change his mind and come back. What do you think, Carl? Uh, you enjoyed today's show, I know. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah? You, any t attempted to come back when we, uh, when we finally mm. return? Maybe a little rest to make you sort of, like, forget how annoying I am. No, that, because that, that, that just... is my secret weapon. Sometimes, you know, because it's the thing that you can, um, you can, f uh, uh, s 
fleece a sheep as many times as you want, but you can only skin it once. Sure. So what I do is sort of like, I, I fleece I never actually l l completely lose a friend. I tease them and talk to them to the point where they're gonna leave me, and I go, oh, anyway, how are you doing? They go, um, I sort of confuse them. Yeah. And that's what I've done with you today. And I think, over the next couple of months, where I'm sort of nicer on the phone, I'm not squeezing your head, you'll go, he's all right, Rick, what yeah. and, then and then I, then I, and I get then you I back in it, it and, and then, then I'll, I'll right, absolutely exactly rip you to pieces that's again. What I'll be doing with. So, but hopefully, and also, um, unlike a lot of my friends who are clever, um, I don't have to worry about you because you will forget. You'll yeah. I mean, because you've got such a, you've got a tiny little intellect. And <laughs> I'll, do you know what I mean? You'll forget Steve? this conversation even took place. <laughs> 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 anyway, it's what everyone's been waiting for. for it's what Carl time. exists for for the last time. It's the, it's monkey news. Play so, the jingle. <laughs> Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! Right, you f are you, uh, familiar with Undreth Monkey? Keep the talking. Undreth Monkey? Undreth. Oh, yeah, like as in like, uh, one more than 99. Hundredth. Yeah. The one hundredth monkey. Yeah, are you, are you familiar with that? No. No. Oh. Uh. Anyway, thanks, that was well, monkey well, news. We'll, we'll uh, that, next then. week, Adam and Jet. what do you mean you're gonna leave that? Well, I thought it was a popular phrase or something. What, hundredth monkey? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean a popular phrase? What, what, why? What? Because you're gonna do songs and phrases with it next week. We've said it once before, hundredth monkey. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, it says the expression hundredth monkey. Well, right, do it anyway, it what's the story? From. Well, it's from the 1950s, right? Mm. And the way that they got it because, um, <sighs> they were following some monkeys about, right? And they started- <laughs> Who was? Who was? Who was? was? Journalists. Oh yeah, why? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to say what what they're up to. Right? Okay, so they're following some monkeys around. Yeah, <laughs> what was it? What a documentary. Anyway, one of them. Come on, come on. One of them washed some potatoes. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Let's <laughs> leave that. Right. <laughs> let's leave. Why let's are we leave that. Come on. A monkey what? washing potatoes. Can we leave that one? No, no, we not. It's you've got to do it now. <laughs> they're, they're following a, what is it, like, like, sort of like a family? A is it a family of monkeys uh, or it was, a... it was just one chimp and it was washing a potato and they thought, that's a bit odd, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. It, it turns out that, that, that ended up teaching another monkey yeah. how to wash a potato. No, they do it, they do, they go down and wash them in the sea, cause they like, they like the taste of salt. And the it's, weird it's, thing it's, is though, they when, pass it got, on, when it on. got to the hundredth monkey, right, even though it hadn't been taught how to wash a potato, yeah. it automatically knew. It knew what to do. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? It, it was in them. It was in them that, that they knew that when they get a potato, they had to wash it. That isn't the monkey news. I'm just I'm just saying that's where the expression comes from. But you're not even heard of that. So well, there's a couple of things there that it could be a, a, another upshot, and you know, an instinct is is part of your genetics and anything else. Washing a potato, but, but you can't pass on acquired characteristics. So that's nonsense. If you mean that. Uh, someone was taught they had a child and it knew it. There's no, there's no chemical oh, memory right. as such in- So that wasn't even that's monkey news. No, the, the monkey news, you know, we've, we've covered a lot of stuff. There was sad, <laughs> there was sad, sad stuff, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, there's some funny stuff in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um. Do like monkey that, news! Playing robbers and that. Um, football team. A monkey football team? Yeah, in, mm -hmm. uh, Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Uh. Got all the uh, got all the team members here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> all the different things. Um, little goalkeeper. Apparently, he's on transfers from some other club. But the bit that got me attention is, apparently, he's a holder of PhD of physics. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to have a look at that? Well, the goalkeeper. Yeah, just the goalkeeper. The the others haven't done that much. <laughs> the others haven't done that much. <laughs> well, I believe that he's got better exam results than you, Carl, but. I don't believe he's got a PhD in physics. Good Obviously, guy. do you know what the name of the team is? Coconut. <laughs> oh. oh, so if the Telegraph are listening, that is the sort of quality entertainment you get. Well, you don't let's, anymore. Let's just put a song on then. Yeah, that's the end. What, Goodbye, what, everybody. What, what have a leave? have yeah. a lovely summer. Yeah, have the a rest time. of it, and uh, we might see you in October. We might not. It's up to Carl Pilkington. Chances are slim. So cool. O two o seven seven double six six thousand. Ask for Carl Pilkington, or email him. What's this? Or, this is uh, Tim Buckley to end with. I think you'll enjoy this. It's called Once or I Was. Andrew Phillips. Called Andrew Phillips.